Hello everyone, I'm Dog Lightning, a Grandmaster Nico support main, and here is my rel guide. As this guide's coming out, it's literally the day before she comes out. I've been playing her on the PBE quite a bit, so I decided to make a guide for people who want to learn her as she comes out. As you can see, um, she's not actually updated on Mobile Fire yet as rel, so it's going to show Aatrox and stuff, and it might be a little scuffed, but the information here is good. And um, if you're watching this video late, it'll be updated over time. Uh, the guide will, not the video. So um, to start, we'll do a TLDR, just quickly go through. Um, I really like going for Guardian. Um, I find Realm more of his appeal support than Engage, so Guardian works well. But if you are forced into the Engage role for your team, um, I think Aftershock is fine. For kill lanes, Ignite um, versus passive lanes, obviously Exhaust. Um, for builds, there's the Peel build. Um, I go for the Locket build with the Zekis and Knight's Vow to peel my teammates, giving them auras and shields and just stuff like that to peel. And if I need to engage my team, I go Shirelia's because I'm trying to um, basically need the speed boost to get me in. And I go the Abyssal Mask because I need some sort of magic resist item instead of Knight's Vow that doesn't make me very tanky. So this is my like roaming engage build. And here's some situational items depending on what you need. Turbo Tem Tank can be put instead of Shirelia's for engaging if you need to be also really tanky. Um, for ability order, I like to go W, E, Q, Max um, in that order, or I can go W and then E, Max first, depending on W makes you tankier, so if you need to be like tanky, frontline-y, you go W, Max, and if you want to just be peeling and like CCing, then getting E on a low cooldown is really nice too. So introduction, I just did that. So pros and cons, um, the pros, she's got really good peel, her W like is a massive AoE knockup zone, really good for peeling her ADC. Um, she has, um, she takes, she's good against tanks, she can take away the, 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 like, stats away from tanks, right? So that's why she's a good peeler, she CCs them, takes away their resistances, makes them squishy. Um, she has decent engage, she can be played as an engage, although I don't think that's her main play style. Um, sorry again for the scuff here, it's because it's not updated to rel yet. Um, she has a shield bake on her Q where she can destroy shields. Uh, she has a unique playstyle and tons of disruption. Um, the cons is her combos are pretty easy to avoid, which is why I don't think she's a primary engage. Her ulti feels like a low impact alt compared to other champions. Um, she's very slow in her melee form. Um, she struggles versus a lot of CC and is not that great from behind, I've found. So summoner spells, I went over this ignite versus kill lane when you want to kill because it reduces heal by half. And exhaust when you just want to play to scale and be safe and peel later. So as I said, um, there's guardian and aftershock. I personally think guardian's the best. Again, her abilities are really easy to dodge. Like her W is really easy to dodge and it can be hard to land it. And if you go for a W, for instance, in lane and you miss the W, right? And you just like don't get aftershock procced, it can be like annoying. Guardian is just more consistent, I found. And it's really good for when you're peeling. But again, if you need to engage, you can always do your mount up where you run at the enemy and flip them overhead which will proc aftershock really easily and your e so aftershock is good if you're going to be frontlining um i personally think shield bash is really good when you go into your armor form you get a shield and you're very slow and susceptible in this point of getting targeted so getting any bonus resistances in this form is really nice but of course font of light is really good especially when you're peeling backliners because you're just giving them health on attacking conditioning if you want to scale second wind versus poke lanes and bone playing versus like bursty all in lanes um, overgrowth is your standard. It'll give you an extra 200 HP later. Really good. But if you're versus a high CC team, unflinching is always a great toy choice. Now for secondaries, you can choose between two sets. If you're going to be like engaging for the team and stuff, I think Hex Flash and Cosmic Insight's really good. Hex Flash has some cheesy plays in the bot lane bushes, and Cosmic Insight reducing your flash by 40 seconds is really good when you need to run in and force and engage more often. Um, if you don't need to force engages, I think the extra utility you get from vision control from zombie and the extra roaming potential from relentless is really good. And I like attack speed runes because she has a really slow attack. So abilities. Again, sorry for the scuff all this. It's because it's not updated to Rel yet on Mobifier. It'll probably be updated tomorrow as she drops. Um, but I needed to get the video done today. So her passive, Break the Mold. Um, basically, when she auto-attacks a new target, she steals their armor and magic resist by 10%. It makes yourself tankier. You can apply this once per target, so just keep auto-attacking different targets. Um, also, her Q will apply the passive, so you can hit people with your Q to apply it. So her Q shoots a lance, like, just like that, like my arm, just like a poof, just like a little thing in front of her. It really doesn't do that much damage. I found maxing it not the greatest because the other abilities are good, but it's really good because it destroys shields, and it also heals you and your link target. The link is your E. I'll, bring, I'll talk about it more there. But basically, yeah, I use this more. I feel like you should use your W and your E, and you should hold this to destroy shields in fights, or use it when people are low, when you're at low HP, because it heals for missing HP. So it's really good when you're lower. I wouldn't be wasting this too early. I think I think you want to hold on to this spell. So her W has two points: armor up and mount up. So you start off on your horse, and when you use armor up, you fly into the air and do a big knock up on the ground, and you turn into a melee form where you have armor, uh, where you have a shield 
and you're just really tanky. But when you go into this floor, form, you're really slow and vulnerable to getting um, hit. On the flip side, when you're in the melee form and you use the mount up, you get a boost of move speed when going towards enemies. And when you auto attack it, it'll flip them over their head and stun it. Um, in general, I find you want to be on your horse if you're peeling because you want to be able to go. The AoE knockup's really easy to dodge. It's not good for engage. So be on your horse and you can peel like that. And if you're looking to engage for your team, you should probably get into the armor form, walking around slowly so that you can mount up and burst at the enemy and flash flip them over your head is probably your main engage pattern. Pattern. Um, so in general, be on your horse for when you're roaming and when you want to peel, and be in mount f on the ground form when you want to be uh, in ready to engage. So your E, you link yourself to a partner, and um, your partner gets 10% bonus uh, magic and armor. You can swap partners, but every time you swap it, the ability goes on a 3 second cooldown. And what the ability actually does when you activate it is it puts a little circle around you and your ally in a line between you, and when you activate it, it stuns everyone in between that line or everyone in the circle around you guys. So it's really good for getting distance between you and your partner and to make a big wide line. So it's really good combo with the mount up where you run at the enemy, you flip them over your head, and then you stun everyone in between you and that person you just flipped. Super, super good combo. Again, your Q heals you and the person who you're attached to for 5% of your missing health. So per person you hit with it. So if you hit it for three people, you'll be healing you and your ally 15% missing health. So again, it's better to hold Q until the fight's mid-fight. I find you're trying to hold it to break a shield or get a fatter heal off because it's missing HP. And then finally, uh, Rel's alt, she puts like a circle around herself and she pulls everyone slightly towards her. And when she's walking around, she sort of pulls them. Um, it's kind of awkward. If you walk too fast, they'll kind of get yoinked out and they can use spells in it still. So they can flash out and use dashes out. Um, it's not like Skarner alt. It's very counterplay. I found this pretty hard part of uh, Rel's kit. Um, it's very hard to use well. You have to keep track of everyone's dashes and flashes most of the time. I found it's not really used as an engage tool. I find it better as a peel tool. When people are diving here, you see you pop it to pull them off them for a second, maybe stun them. Um, it's If you're engaging, it's good to use it not to pull, but more to like hold them in place while you land your W. So you're running at horse and you pop ulti as you're jumping there with the knockup to try and hold them in place. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think you're going to really see this as a Skarner alt as what people thought when it came out. So yeah, so there are two styles. Again, it's kind of scuffed because of the thing. So I'll just go up here to show you. It's like this exactly. Um, so the first one is the tank style. This one, the W's cooldown doesn't go down when you put points in it, but it makes your shield bigger. So if you're probably like, if you're the only tank on your team and you're going to be frontlining, it's really good to be maxing this first because the bigger shield just makes you tankier. If you don't need to be frontlining and you're more peeling and disrupting, I think this is the best. It reduces the cooldown of Rel's E by eight seconds, which is a lot, which is like, you know, if you're trying to get stuns in a fight, this could be the difference between getting two stuns in a fight or not. Um, really, really good. So I would probably max E if you're disruption and W if you're going to be tanky. Um, again, I've only played her for like a week on PvE. I'll be updating this guide as time goes on, but this is just what I think so far as general thoughts. So items, um, she scales with AP and you want to be tanky, so Relic Shield's your automatic go-to choice. Uh, Ninja Tarabies are whatever it's called, plated steel caps versus um, full AD teams. Uh, magic resist boots versus AP teams, or if you want tenacity so you aren't CC'd as long. Um, Moby boots, always great for roaming. Swifties, if you don't have enough for Bobies and you want to roam, or if the enemy team has a bunch of slows, say it's like an Ash Lulu bot lane and they're just tagging you with slows, it gives you slow resist, so pretty good. Um, core items... Yeah, there's the locket. Of course, you could think of this as like the tanky frontline engage because you want to be tanky, but I found it more of a peel item because it's giving AoE aura to your teammates and you can give the AoE shields and you're just like a backliner sort of. I found if you want to engage, you want to go for either the Shirelias or the Turbo. Shirelias is a really good roaming item because you get the early move speed from the component and you can roam around and use it to engage. But if you're the primary engage for your team and you're the primary tank, you probably want to go with the Turbo Tem Chem Tech as it makes you actually like tanky compared to Shirelias and it um, gives you a really good engage. So um, yeah, those are the mythics. Choose one of these depending on what you want to do. Peeling slash tanky, um, semi-engage, maybe off-engager, main-engage tank. Um, situational items. Um, Ziki is honestly the cheapest like d d tank item in the game. It's kind of just core, honestly, on all tanks. So just grab it if you uh, need some armor. Um, Knight's Vow, really good if there's assassins just dive in your ADC and they're dying a lot. Redemption is um, a nice item if the enemy team has a bunch of poke. Like, say they have a Zerath who's just like chunking your team before a team fight starts and you can get redemption and heal it up. Um, Abyssal Mask is just the cheapest magic resist item in the game right now. So if you are going like one, not the Turbo Chem Tank, but going like Shirelia's and you need that like extra magic resist, um, Abyssal Mask is pretty good. You have lots of CC in your, t your, your kit, so lots of ways to enable the 10% extra damage. Um, 
Thornmail if you need Grievous Wounds. Um, and if you're going to be roaming early and you get a lead, you can go for either um, Dead Man's Plate or Force of Nature, depending if you need aid armor or magic resist. This is if you're snowballing, just more move speed when you're small. When you're snowballing, extra move speed just helps you rotate the map quicker, find picks quicker. So these are good options if you're just snowballing and want move speed. So early game um, and like just game in general, when you're leashing level one, I start W. So like maybe five seconds before the bus spawns, I turn into melee form to get the shield. And the main reason is when you're in melee form, you move slow. So you want to have your W off cooldown. So when you finish leashing, you can turn into horse and get back to lane quick. So I turn into melee form. I go in, I take two autos from the from the buff, and then I turn into horse form, flip it over my head to stun it, auto it once, and then walk towards lane. Um, as you come into lane, I would usually look for early on a really aggressive armor up where you go in and stun them. And then you can stay in that form. It's really hard to mess up. Like, even if you miss, you get a big shield. So at worst, you're just losing a small sliver of health either way. And you're getting that bone plating, or not bone plating, um, shield bash resistances. So, yeah, early on, I'd look for a really aggressive W stun. And even if you don't miss it, it's okay. Because once you hit level 2, you can then mount up and you run with your horse, flip him over your head, pop the E stun. And then you're getting another good trade right there. Once you're um, level 3... Again, you can use your Q. I would use it and hold it to break shields if they have a shield in lane, or I would use it to heal you and your ally. Um, now you get to this point where you want to, basically for the rest of the game, you have to really pick what stance you want to be in, right? If you're in horse stance, just know it's hard to engage. Yes, it, you, you would think in your head, oh, it's a big stun. It's easy to engage, but lots of things counter it. A Janna Tornado, a Leona Stud Minair, a Thresh Flay. Like, pretty much any hard CC is going to counter your W in from horse to melee form. So I've found when you're in horse form, you're really looking to peel. When they engage on your ADC, you go big W on top of them and counter engage. Right? So counter engage peel. If you're looking to engage, I'd make sure you're in armor form. Yes, you're moving slowly, but then when you pop your horse form and you run at them, you're super fast. Like, you can send a bush in armor form, hex flash into lane, turn into mount, and run at them, flip them over your head and stun. So, in general, throughout the whole game, when you want to be engaging, be in the slow armor form, and when you want to be peeling, be in the mount form. Um, so finally, when you hit 6, uh, you get your ulti. Again, you can't really use it that well as an iron, uh, a Skarner ult. It's more of a peel ult, in my opinion. But you can use it to cancel dashes, like a Tristana W or something, if you time it correctly. And of course, this is makes it... Now it's easier. Like I said, when you're in the horse form, you can't really engage. But with this, you can, because you can actually use it mid-transformation. So as you're Wing on the enemy, you can pop the ulti to cancel any dashes they might do to get out, and then um, force them to get hit by the W into your E stun. And then you can try to pull them back with whatever time left in your ulti, but... Most likely, you're just not worth trying to pull them back because you're just going to... If they go through it, now you're just all of a sudden farther back than you could have been if you were walking forwards. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, sorry that the guide's a bit scuffed in areas. It's just not updated on Mobile Fire yet, but I wanted to get this guide ready for her release. Um, I'm going to be updating this guide a couple times over the next week, so I hope that this guide has helped you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the stream. Love you guys.